Good morning. Good to see all of you today in God's house. This week we continue our series called Behind the Curtain. This week we take a peek behind the curtain and Jesus shows us that what seems far away is really at the door. It's easy in the hustle and bustle of daily life to forget that Jesus is coming and to focus on the things of this world. But today Jesus calls us to be ready, to be prepared, to prepare our hearts. And we do that by focusing on the one thing that matters and the one thing that lasts forever, by focusing on his word. We'll follow the order of service found in your worship folder. You can also follow along on the screens up front. We'll begin with the opening hymn found on page four.
please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed, Blessed are they, they whose sin, sin the Lord does not count against them. them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty, Almighty and merciful and Father, we have, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from the grave by his resurrection from death. You have peace with God now and forever. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God and Savior, you have set the final day and hour when we shall be delivered from this world of sin and death. Keep us ever watchful for the coming of your Son, that we may sit with him and all your holy ones at the marriage feast in heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
At this time, all the children are invited forward for the children's devotion. morning. Very somber group this morning. (laughs) All right, so this week, Thanksgiving is right around the corner, right? Thanksgiving's a pretty nice day, right? You don't have to do any homework, do any school. You get to see family and friends. You get to eat good food, right? Now, let's say you have some friends or some family coming over for Thanksgiving. What are some things that you might do to get ready for them? Any thoughts? That's okay, I can tell you. Uh, So anyway, you might want to clean your room, right? You might want to clean up the house a little bit. Maybe your parents will make some food uh, for them. Maybe you guys will clean up. Maybe you'll wear nice clothes like you guys are today. Maybe you'll comb your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face, right? Because what if you didn't do any of those things and they came over, right? They might be kind of surprised. They might think, oh, you guys weren't ready for us. You weren't expecting us. Maybe we weren't worth the time for you guys to get ready for us. They'd be pretty disappointed, right? Today we're going to hear about Jesus and his return. And to get ready for Jesus, we don't necessarily have to do those same things. We don't have to make food for him. We don't need to make our beds for him. He's more concerned about us preparing our hearts for him. Now there's all sorts of other things we might focus on in this world, right? You guys are pretty busy. Maybe you guys have sports. Maybe you guys have music. Maybe you guys have school. Um, Your parents are pretty busy too, right? They work. They take care of you. There are all these things that keep us busy in life. But Jesus wants us to focus on the one thing that matters most, and that's him and his word, because that's what tells us how we're saved, and that's the only thing that lasts forever. So let's pray about that. Dear Lord, thank you for sending your son Jesus to live and die and to save us. Thank you also for the promise that you are coming soon and that you are going to take us home to heaven to be with you forever. Help us to prepare our hearts as we wait for the day when you come with all your angels to bring us home to heaven. In your name we pray, amen. Our first reading comes from Isaiah 51. The Lord's salvation is on the way. Lift up your eyes to see it. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way, and my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. Heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the psalm of the day, Psalm 16. You're invited to sing the refrains, and we will read the verses responsively. our God, and 
and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Christians wait for Christ's return by keeping themselves in and showing to others Christ's love. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire to show others mercy Mixed with, uh, save others by snatching them from the fire to show others mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothes stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. gospel, which will also serve as the basis for today's sermon, comes from Mark 13. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. He will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're walking down the street, and up ahead of you, you see a strange-looking man. His clothes are torn and tattered. He has a long, dirty beard. As you walk past him, you avoid eye contact because he has a crazed look in his eyes. In his hands, he holds a cardboard sign that reads, the end is near. He's a doomsayer. Maybe you've seen that image. Maybe you're familiar with that image. Maybe you've seen people like a doomsayer. Doomsday preppers, apocalypse predictors, people who store away decades worth of canned goods waiting for the end, who build bomb shelters and bunkers in their own backyards. It's easy to make fun of these people. They're easy to laugh at. And that's because their message is so different from everyone else in the world. Science tells us that we still have a billion years before the Earth comes to an end. History tells us that things will keep on going on just as they have since the beginning. And our eyes tell us that the sun is still shining. Life seems pretty normal. But today, Jesus pulls back the curtain and he shows you that what's far away is now at the door. The doomsayers are right. The end is near. Jesus is coming, and he is coming soon. So what does that mean for you? And what does that mean for us as Christians? Should we sell all of our possessions and belongings and stand out on street corners like the doomsayer? Or should we just go on with our lives, pretending like nothing is different? In his words for today, Jesus gives us the answer. Jesus begins his words for today with a bang. He describes what the end of the world will look like. The sky will be split open, and Jesus will descend on a cloud, his face glorious and radiant, surrounded by thousands and thousands of his angels. He'll send out his angels throughout the world to gather his people together to be with him. When the disciples heard this, they were curious. They wondered, when would these things happen? When would the end come? Jesus pointed them to the fig tree. He said, You know that when you see the fig tree, when its branches become soft and green, when it starts to sprout leaves, you know that summer is right around the corner. And it's the same thing with the end of the world. When you see the signs, you'll know that the end is near. When you see prophets and hear prophets claiming to come in my name, who pretend to be me, but are actually false prophets, when you hear of wars, and rumors of wars. When you hear of kingdoms rising up against other kingdoms and nations fighting against nations, when you hear of natural disasters, famine, plague, earthquakes, then you'll know the end is near, that I am at the door. I am coming soon. The disciples filed that away. And years later, after Jesus had returned to heaven, after he had risen and gone back up to heaven, they looked around them and they saw those signs. They saw false prophets claiming to be Jesus. They heard of wars and rumors of wars. They watched as Jerusalem, the holy city, was burned down by the Romans. They were surrounded by famine and plague and natural disasters, and they thought, surely Jesus would be coming soon. Surely he would come within their lifetimes. But of course, he didn't. The early church thought the same things. They they saw the signs. They thought Jesus was coming soon. But fast forward almost 2,000 years, and here we are still today, still surrounded by the signs, and still waiting for Jesus to come. In fact, Jesus doesn't really feel near, does he? It seems like he's very far away. We might put his return in the same category as a nuclear apocalypse, a world-ending meteor strike, a miracle, something that could happen someday, but not likely to happen today. And it makes sense, doesn't it? Because Jesus is out of sight, out of mind for us. There's no clock on the wall that counts down how many days or hours there are until Jesus comes. We can't visibly see him getting closer and closer as he draws near. When was the last time that you even considered, if ever, that Jesus could return today? And instead of focusing on Jesus, we forget about him. Because we can't see or touch and hold him. So we focus on the things in this world that we can see 
and touch and feel and hold and grasp. We focus on our careers, on our jobs, on making money, on saving money for retirement, for college, for a dream, for a vacation. We focus on our relationships, our loved ones. We focus on spending time with our family, pouring in money and attention into our children. We focus on enjoying life, celebrating, living it up, filling ourselves with turkey for Thanksgiving and having a drink or two for the holidays. And none of those things are bad in and of themselves, but they're bad when they start to distract us from the bigger picture. Because what if tonight there was a knock on your door? You open the door and there stands Jesus himself in the flesh. He's returned, he's back, just as he said he was, just as he said he would. But of course you weren't expecting him. You weren't ready for him, but you let him in anyway. What would he see as he walks through your home? Would he see a desk piled high with work to do? Would he see a calendar full of events and sports games? Would he see a house full of toys and possessions? Would he find a dusty Bible hidden somewhere on a bookshelf? More importantly, what would Jesus see if he looked into your heart? Would he see a heart eagerly and expectantly waiting for him? Or would he find a heart busy and cluttered and distracted by everything the world has to offer us? Would he find a heart eager for treasure in heaven? Or would he find a heart eager to accumulate and gain treasure here on earth? Would he find a heart focused on teaching your children heavenly truths, saving truths? Or would he find a heart obsessed with teaching your children how to be successful and prosperous in this world? Would he find a heart focused and locked in on the one thing that really matters? Or would he find a heart distracted by family gatherings and social calendars and all the good things this world has to offer? And what would Jesus say to you? Would he say, well done, good and faithful servant? Or would he shake his head and look at you sadly and say, I told you to be ready. I told you I was coming. But the reason Jesus tells us these things, the reason that he tells us that he's near, isn't to scare us. It's not to leave you afraid. But it's because he loves you. He wants you to grasp hold of the one thing that matters in life, the one thing that lasts forever. Because everything else in this world, everything that we can grasp and hold and touch will pass away. Our wealth and financial security can be shaken. All of our loved ones will pass away someday. All the pleasures that this world has to offer, all the joys are here for an instant, and then they're gone forever. But the word of God endures forever. In the beginning, God spoke, and this entire world came into being. He speaks and kingdoms rise and fall. He speaks and the winds and the waves obey him. When our world became corrupted, God spoke and he promised the Savior who would save us. Through prophets and prophecy, he promised a better day when his Savior would come, when Jesus would come. And in Jesus, all of those promises were fulfilled. You have life and peace with God now and forever. And now that same God who spoke and created the world has spoken again and he says that he is coming soon to bring an end to this world. In fact, those are the very last words we hear Jesus speaking in the Bible. He says, yes, I am coming soon. But even though we know that Jesus is coming soon, we don't know exactly when he will come. And Jesus goes to lengths to point this out. He emphasizes this point. He says that not even the angels in heaven Not even Jesus himself knows when the end will come. Only God the Father. And because no one can know when the end will come, that means we have to be alert and watchful. To illustrate this point, he tells a short story. He says, a man went on a journey. But before he leaves, he sets his house in order. He gives commands to all of his servants, their jobs to do while he is away. He tells those who need to clean, he tells them to keep cleaning so that the house is clean when the master returns. He tells the gardener to keep trimming the lawns and taking care of the grounds so that everything is beautiful when he returns. He tells the doorman 
to keep watch and be on guard and be alert so that they can meet him the instant he comes back. And they don't know when he might come back. He could come back late at night or early in the morning or in the afternoon. But because they don't know when he's coming, they have to stay alert. They have to keep watch. Now in the story that Jesus tells, we are the servants and God is the master. And just like the servants, we don't know when God is coming back. We don't know when Jesus will return. So we have to keep watch. We have to stay alert. So what does it mean to keep watch? What does it mean to stay alert? It means to be a faithful servant. On the one hand, you keep your eyes focused on today. You don't need to sell your possessions or be a doomsayer because there's work to do. There are things that need to be done. You have families to take care of. You have jobs to do. You have people who need you. You have responsibilities in this world. But at the same time, we don't carry on like everyone else in this world does, mindlessly, not thinking about Jesus' return. Even though our eyes are focused on today, our hearts are set on tomorrow for when Jesus comes back. There is a constant song, a constant refrain stuck in our head saying, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. In all things, we remember, Jesus is coming. Are your friends ready? Because Jesus is coming. Are your children ready? Because Jesus is coming. Is your family ready? Because Jesus is coming. And most importantly, are you ready? Because Jesus is coming. And maybe that sounds exhausting to you. Who has the time and energy to constantly be working today and thinking about tomorrow, thinking about Jesus at every hour, every moment, thinking, is this the moment when Jesus could come back? Is this the moment when he finally comes and takes us home? Who has the time and the energy to wait and dream and hope for the return of someone who is long gone to come back? Who waits like this? People who are in love. People who are in love wait like this. A man and a woman fall in love. They spend every moment they can together, but eventually the day comes when they have to separate. Their distance, their relationship will be long distance. But before the man leaves, he leaves the woman with a ring and with the promise that soon he'll be back. Soon they'll be united. Soon they'll be married and they'll never have to say goodbye. But for every moment and every hour until that moment when they're finally united, that's all they can think about. That's all they can dream about. Tomorrow, the day of the wedding. Maybe you've experienced that love story yourself. Maybe you've seen that love story yourself. But brothers and sisters in Christ, you are a part of the greatest love story ever told. It's a story of how God loved you. He loved you so much that he gave up his only son for you. It's the story of how Jesus loved you so much that he gave up everything for you. He suffered everything for you. He went through suffering and pain and even death itself to make you his. And it's not just a momentary love. He's always loved you. He loved you from the beginning, before you were born, before you could do anything for him. He says to you, I have loved you with an everlasting love. But the story isn't over. We aren't quite reunited with Jesus yet. Things aren't all cheery and rosy on this side of heaven. For now, we wait. Every Sunday, we gather together and we hear the love letters God has written to us in his word, where he tells us of the promises he's fulfilled, of the work he's done in Jesus, and of the one promise yet to come, the promise that he is near, that he is coming to save us from this world. For those of you who are suffering, he promises that the day is coming when he will wipe every tear from your eyes. For those of you who are, have been fortunate to enjoy a good life, God says that what he has waiting for you is far beyond anything this world can offer. We just have to wait and keep watch. As faithful servants, we continue to do the work God has given us. And as people deeply in love, we wait and we dream about tomorrow, the day when Jesus returns to take us home. And we cling to those final words of Jesus. Yes, I am coming soon. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly.
Amen. Please stand. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We pray. Loving God and Lord, you created the universe that surrounds us and the globe on which we live. You control all things through your Son, who sits at your right hand in glory. Comfort us with the promise of your eternal presence. Give your word power as it works in our hearts and minds. Clear away our confusion and demolish our doubts. Send your spirit to strengthen both our confidence in your promises and our desire to live according to your will. Take away our love of sinning and restore us each day by your grace. The signs of the times warn us that the end, time, the end of time is near. Protect us from scoffers who sneer at your truth. Spare us and, and Christians around the world from all forms of hate and persecution. Give us courage to carry the cross with patience and joy. Instill in the hearts of our children a desire to follow you as they prepare for future days. Help them distinguish between what is passing and what is eternal, between instant thrills and, and lasting joy. Encourage more young people to prepare for service in the public ministry of the gospel. Mold us and move us to be good examples for our youth. Hold in your care, Lord, those who are experiencing physical or emotional pain and all who are afflicted by disease or facing death. Pour out your compassion on the grieving and comfort the mourners who miss someone they love. Move us to pray for these brothers and sisters and to help when we can. Whether we pray together or alone, you have promised to hear and answer us. Give us patience to accept your blessings in whatever way you send them. In your love and wisdom, prepare us for the day when you will take us to be with you forever. Hear us for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, whether that's in person or online. At this time, please take a moment to let us know that you are here, either by scanning the QR code on the back of your service folder or by going to goodnewslc.org slash connect. If you'd like to give an offering in support of our ministry, you can do so at goodnewslc.org slash give.
Please stand. We pray. Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and benefit of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn.
Good morning. Once again, welcome to Good News. What a, a joy to gather here with you in God's house today. Certainly thank Vicar Zhang for bringing us the word of God today and leading our service. Today is actually the very last Sunday of the church year, which means that next Sunday is the first season, first Sunday of the first season of the church year, the season known as Advent. We'll be kicking off a new Advent worship series. We are also having our Advent kickoff event this evening right here at Good News at 6 o'clock. Uh, thank you to all those who have signed up already. Very excited to have a, a very nice turnout for the event. Even if you haven't signed up at this point, you're still very much welcome to attend. Number of announcements are in your service folder, most of them looking ahead to the holiday season that is in front of us. Uh, first of all, a note about decorating our worship space and really our entire facility for Christmas. That's taking place next Saturday, November 27th at 10 o'clock. Everyone's invited to join us. On Sunday, or I'm sorry, on Saturday, December 11th, we will be meeting here in the morning to head out with some gifts and some Christmas invitations to hit up a number of people who are on our prospect list to invite them to join us for any number of our different Christmas events and services. And we need some people who are willing to help make those wonderful, fun deliveries to people. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet on the table in the entryway to the left of the doors as you head out. And then lastly, please take note of the service information for uh, the holiday season that is in your service folder. Um, things are going to be pretty much normal through December 12th. December 12th is uh, the day of our children's Christmas service that is going to take place here at a regular time of 9 o'clock. But then on Sunday, no, uh, December 19th, we are excited to once again be welcoming the Lutheran Cayley Orchestra. You might remember they were here two years ago. We did an afternoon concert with them at Martinson Hall. The turnout was fantastic. The music was great. Uh, we invited them back this year, and this year they're actually going to lead our Sunday service that morning, which we're going to have at 10 o'clock instead of our regular time, and it's going to be at Martinson Hall. So 10 o'clock in the morning. It'll be fairly uh, similar to a regular service except that this Celtic group will be doing all of the music. And then in the afternoon at 4 o'clock, we will once again have a, a full concert featuring them. So you're invited to join us for those. It's also a great event to invite people to join us for. And then please note our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day service times, which are also in the service folder. This year, Christmas Eve falls on a Friday night. Christmas Day is Saturday, which means that the very next day is Sunday right away. So then we'll have church on the 26th as well. You're invited to join us for all of those wonderful opportunities to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Everyone's invited to stick around for fellowship and refreshments following the service as well as Sunday school and Bible class. Great seeing you again this morning. God be with you this week. <laughs>